my goodness! Oh no! I'm doing everything in my power to not hit the brake, but the it's still doing it. Credit where credit's due. Hey guys, I've got a really cool one for you today because behind me is one of the weirdest, strangest, and downright coolest cars you can buy in 2020. It's a car you've probably never heard of, the Hyundai Nexo, but in this video, we're gonna talk to you about why it's probably the most interesting vehicle on sale today. The Hyundai Nexo is powered by hydrogen poop, hang on. The Hyundai Nexo is powered entirely by hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe. Hydrogen goes into this nozzle at extremely high pressure and then is sent to the front of the vehicle where it's combined with oxygen to make water. And it also makes electricity. And that electricity is used to power an electric motor which drives you down the road. It's a very renewable resource, but it's also very rare because here in Colorado, there are no publicly available hydrogen fueling stations. You gotta be in California to drive a Nexo, and that's what makes these cars so rare. One of the coolest functions on this Nexo is a system called Smart Park, or if you watch the Super Bowl commercial, it's called what, Alex? Smart Park. Smart Park. Smart Park. Smart Park. Yeah, I can't say that. Uh, I need a, a local Easterner to do that. So this function called Smart Park. Yeah, it will help you get out of a parking space if you're really jammed in there. It'll also help you park the vehicle, and it's all done via the key. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to remote start the Nexo. So make sure it's locked push and hold the remote start button. If I push on this rearward arrow, the car should, <laughs> it does, it's backs up from the spot. <laughs> but there's currently no one driving and the car is backing up. When Hyundai was designing this hydrogen powered vehicle, they could have just taken a fuel cell and stuck it in one of the production models and sent it on its way. But what they did instead was, from the ground up, build just about the most bespoke new model I've seen out of any manufacturer. Hardly anything is shared between this Nexo and just about any other Hyundai, to be honest. So for example, the door handles, where are they? <laughs> they're, they're clearly not here on the door until you walk up close or unlock the vehicle. And then check this out. All four door handles pop out of the bodywork. You can grab them and open the door. That is a seriously over-engineered solution to a problem that doesn't really exist, but I love that they did this because it's so wacky and cool. To lock the vehicle, I push the little lock icon here. Is this necessary? No, but it does make you feel like you are getting into the future. This is our first challenge. We've got our Land Rover Discovery and of course our Smart 2. This is a massive spa. Let's see if the Nexo can figure it out. Now I need a helper to see how far this distance is. Dad, you wanna grab the end of this tape measure? And I'm just about out of tape measure at 24 feet. So, about 27 feet. This is a massive spot. The Nexo should do this with no problem. Let's see if it does. So I'm driving along. I click this little button and look at this. Here's a parallel space. Let's see if the car will park itself in this space all by itself. So the idea is you drive along, it looks for spaces, and then once it sees one, it will tell you to stop, and now in theory, this car should park itself. Let's see if that happens. All right, there it goes. I'm walking the Nexo. It's parking itself all with the key. How weird is this? Or is it gonna hit the curb? There it goes. Parked. So in the world's largest parking spot, it stopped pretty close to Tweety. Not very well centered, but I'd say that's an acceptable distance from the curb. So let's make the space a lot smaller and see if it can park itself again. The driving experience in the Nexo is, it's, it's pretty normal actually, for the amount of technology that makes this car go. You, you wouldn't tell by just getting in it and driving to work. It drives like a normal electric car, so the acceleration is fairly instant, it's very smooth, there's no noise. I don't know what to say, it's just a, a regular car. 
All right, it's regular, but there are a couple of slightly weird things. For example, when you go to accelerate hard, there's a hissing noise, and that hissing noise is the air rushing into the engine compartment because, of course, to accelerate faster, you need to make more electricity, which means you need more hydrogen, which means you need more air, and that air is the air being forced across the fuel cell. Now, once you make your way inside the Nexo, you realize this car is polar opposite to just about everything on the road. It's so weird. You know, Tesla's got away from buttons altogether. Just one central screen that controls every function of the vehicle. Hyundai said, let's just give everything a button or four. We'll, we'll just line the whole center console. And it looks so cool. It's just like retro 1980s in a lot of ways. Up here are the controls for the radio and the navigation. So I have a volume knob and thank goodness a two knob below that. These are all the climate controls. Dual zone automatic climate control for both the driver and the passenger. But I also have ventilated and heated seats, a button for heated steering wheel, a couple buttons for fan controls. They're all easy to use and they're all actually pretty visible and not too small. That's nice. Then I've got the controls for the actual center cluster. There's a little controller knob here, but you also got home, back, and menu buttons. And then several different drive modes. The seats in the Nexo are extremely comfortable and the design is pretty phenomenal. You've got a lot of different colors, a lot of different textures and patterns that all combine into one cohesive design. This is hard to do well. It's not the same across the bolsters and it's not the same across the center. These are also ventilated seats, so this perforation is functional. Overall, I gotta tell you what, this Nexo is old school. It's floaty. It's very like 1950s Cadillac in here in that nothing is sporty. It's just really cushy and really comfy. The rear seat passengers can feel like they are cruising down Monaco on their yachts as well, which is pretty cool, but the back seat on the Nexo is massive. Really, really roomy, almost a completely flat floor, tons of headroom, decent legroom here, and I even have an AC 115 volt outlet. Once again, a very comfortable place to spend time. Hyundai nailed the comfort with the Nexo. The weird materials in the Nexo continues on the dashboard. You've got this plastic, but rather than just doing a solid gray plastic, they've textured it with this almost bark-like finish. And take a look at this binnacle. This is asymmetrical, and it makes a nice little organic shield over the actual instrumentation here so that you don't get too much glare when you're driving in bright sunlight. Now, rather than just kind of taking some gauges and sticking them inside two big holes, Hyundai created this almost artistic-like line just to be a little bit different. Much more of a big challenge now. The Landover is 20 feet away from the back of our smart car Tweety, so about seven feet less distance. Let's see if the Nexo can figure this one out. So I'm gonna go ahead and push and hold the smart park button, release the brake, and let's see if it can park in a 20-foot gap. Still pushing and holding the button. Oh, oh, that is much, much tighter. How am I doing? Am I, am I gonna hit that car? You've got like a foot. All right, it's trying it. Man, it gets so close. All right, that was parked, but that was uh, much harder than I thought it would be. The car actually performed brilliantly, but it got pretty darn close to that Land Rover. There are a lot of advantages to hydrogen over a battery electric vehicle, especially for someone coming from a gasoline car because you really don't have to change the way you drive and fuel up your vehicle. You can drive 354 miles on a full tank of hydrogen and then once you're empty, you pull up to a hydrogen station, two minutes later, you're right back to 354 miles of range and off you go again. It's just like driving a gas car. You don't have to stop, you don't have to plug it in. There are cons though, of course, because an electric vehicle, you can charge up completely from your home. But there are other pros of hydrogen. So for example, they do much better in the winter time than electrics. It's pretty common knowledge now that, you know, batteries tend to lose a lot of their capacity when it gets really cold. 
hydrogen vehicles, they're happy chugging along anywhere from like negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to the hottest summers in Arizona. They're not gonna lose a serious amount of range based on temperature. Check out this cubby here in the center of the Nexo. You've got a USB port as well as a pass-through for, let's see if I can show it, for other cables which can feed down here into the center of the vehicle. Now this cubby is interesting. I thought it would be for a phone, but if you have a smaller one, it might work. However, there's also a wireless charging tray way underneath this floating center section. Now even though this hydrogen vehicle doesn't have a traditional transmission in any kind of normal sense, it does have paddle shifters. And these paddle shifters are very handy because these control the amount of regenerative braking that goes into a small battery pack in the rear. So I pull on the left one and I can increase the regenerative braking, pull on the right one and I can decrease it as well, all through these little paddle shifters here on this bizarre two-spoke steering wheel. The center screen in the Nexo is fairly similar in its operation to other Hyundais, but there are of course some unique hydrogen only cues. So if I go home, you'll take a look at this panel and you can see this big circle. This is as far as I can drive on hydrogen power and it will show me all the hydrogen stations nearby except there are none. So there are no hydrogen stations here in Colorado within this vehicle's range. Probably not all that surprising. But if I go into energy flow, you can actually see where the power is going at any given time as you drive along. That's a nice touch. And then you go into the eco driving screen. This will show you how efficiently you're driving. It will also show you how much air you are purifying as you drive along, how much CO2 you are reducing from driving a hydrogen powered vehicle. And then lastly, there is this screen which shows you the status of the hydrogen tanks, the temperatures and the pressures as well. This is very important in case there's an issue. And probably the coolest one is there's something called an FCEV guide. And because this technology is so new, this is basically a little video that shows you how a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle works. Now under the hood of the Nexo, you are not going to find a front trunk. You're going to find a hydrogen fuel stack. And this is where the magic happens. Air enters the front of the vehicle like it does on a gasoline powered car, but then it passes through a membrane where it's met with the hydrogen from the tank and that creates water and electricity. That electricity powers the front wheels through an electric motor, direct drive, not a whole lot to break in the system. It's actually very robust. It's become very safe now as well. No oil to change. Total system output is just over 160 horsepower, but almost 300 pound feet of torque. It's a, it's, it's a lot more complicated than it made it sound. There's a lot of engineering in this car to make that all happen. For example, this is really a hybrid when you think about it because that hydrogen fuel cell alone doesn't power the front wheels by itself. There's also a battery in the rear of the vehicle, about a 1.56 kilowatt hour battery, which fills in the gaps from when the hydrogen system is ramping up and ramping down. Just like your gas car, the Nexo has exhaust ports, but rather than dispensing nasty, harmful pollutants into the air, the car just dispenses pure water, but water in its most purified form. There are no minerals added like you would find in bottled water. There's actually three exhaust ports. There's one on the right side, one on the left side, and then a big one right in the center. The Nexo dispenses water as you drive along. It just kind of dribbles out from the tailpipes, but what happens if you live in a really cold environment like Colorado and it gets down to like 30 degrees? What happens if it dribbles in your garage? Well, you'll wake up and you'll have an ice rink and that is not ideal, but Hyundai has thought of that in a clever solution. There's a button here called H2O out and this will actually purge the system of water so it doesn't leak any while you're sleeping or overnight. That is a really handy system and actually you can collect that water for other purposes, I guess, if you so desire. Let me show you. So, so here it is. It's just water, but it's water that the car made all by itself and you're not really supposed to drink it. It's, it's, not, it's not meant to be drunk, but in theory, it, it mean, it's like the purest form of, of a liquid really. So we're gonna give it a whirl. Not, not great. 
You guys gotta see the paperwork that's included when you buy a Nexo. Are you ready? All right, here is the Nexo fuel cell owner's manual. It's uh, it's, it's it's pretty long. It's probably what three four hundred pages, uh, and then they give you a second one for the navigation system in four different languages. That's probably another 500 pages long. It's kind of a new technology and they, they definitely feel like they've got a lot to say about it. So if you buy an Exo, you better be prepared to do a lot of reading or probably none at all is more likely. This is the 19 foot parking challenge. Now in the 20 foot parking challenge, it worked like a dream. I did hit the brake once though because I just didn't trust it, but I got to put my faith in Hyundai engineering and just hope we don't end up with a collision because it's getting harder and harder. As a Boulderite, this is not a particularly big city we were in. I don't know if I would feel comfortable parking in this spot, but let's see if the Hyundai does. Now, one thing that's a little counterintuitive is you have to put your foot on the brake, select the parking maneuver, and then while your foot is still on the brake, in order to start parking, you have to push and hold the button, which is a little bit, a little odd. Turn signal is on automatically. I'm gonna just trust the car on this one. I didn't trust it on the 20 footer. I had to put my foot on the brake because I was nervous, but let's see if it'll do it. Release brake. Please don't crash. Please, please don't crash. Ooh, this is tight, guys. This is really tight. Stop! Oh my goodness! Oh no! I'm doing everything in my power to not hit the brake, but the it's still doing it. Credit where credit's due. This is a tight spot. This is all the car. I am not using the gas or the brake. Oh. It hits the brake hard as well. I mean, come on, that's a pretty impressive parking job. And the cool thing is, the Nexo should be able to guide itself out of the parking spot as well. Let's see if that works on this 19 foot challenge. So to guide the Nexo out of the parking spot, same procedure, click the parking button, checking space, there it goes, select the direction, I am not touching the gas or the brake. This is all the car. It turns the turn signal on automatically. <laughs> it's working. This is such a weird sensation. It shows me a little display up here in the center too so I can check for bikes. That's nice. Oh, this is ridiculous. It's amazing it can do it though. Exit completed. All right, let's try another foot off. Let's see if it'll do it at 18 feet. Another benefit to hydrogen is that the fuel cells in the tanks last a long time. So if you're worried about battery degradation, not so much of an issue with hydrogen powered vehicles. Uh, you know, it's such a new and relatively untested technology for consumer cars that <laughs> it's hard to say exactly how long a fuel stack will last because the data isn't out there in the full extent that it is to like a full electric because they don't make a whole lot of hydrogen vehicles but so far the oldest vehicle that people could actually buy and not lease was the Mirai and some of those are hitting 100 150,000 miles and the hydrogen fuel cells are just still trucking along just as efficiently as they were new now of course the hydrogen car actually is several decades old uh, Honda was doing hydrogen vehicles, you know, in the early 2000s, even in the 90s, but those were lease only. It's not really until the Nexo and the Mirai that you can go out and buy your own hydrogen vehicle to keep for as long as you want. The coolest part about the Nexo, as we talked about, is that it's a bespoke ground up vehicle. It doesn't share a lot with other Hyundai or Kia products. So they could have designed it to look like anything and they chose to make it look like this. It's not a bad looking car. It's got some really interesting styling cues, but it's just a little frumpy. I would have liked to seen something more sleek, more sporty. It's their like halo, look at the technology vehicle we have. Why did they make it into a front wheel drive hatchback? Make it into something sporty, rear wheel drive. Much like the Kona, this Nexo uses that split headlight turn signal design with the headlights positioned lower down here on the bumper. I also like this jewel-like finish that extends across the entire width of the vehicle. It's just different and it's so bizarre compared to every other Hyundai. 
Another cool design cue Old done for Aero is this pass through D pillar with these vortex generators along back. Nice little things like that do make the vehicle feel more premium and upscale, but it's still a hatchback. To get into the trunk of the Nexo, I can either use a key or I can push a button on the car, and the power lift gate rises to life. And you do see the benefit of the squared off design because the trunk is positively massive. If I fold back this net, I've got another decent sized cubby in the rear. And this is where things get even cooler because I can actually remove this cubby altogether and you can start to see the inner workings of the Nexo. This is the cover to one of the hydrogen tanks and actually the hydrogen tanks live underneath. There are three of them in total and they are extremely strong. You wouldn't believe some of the ballistics testing they put these tanks through to make sure they will never explode. And then take a look at this. This is actually your high voltage battery. It lives right here underneath the main storage floor, but it's kind of unique that you can see this stuff without taking things apart. All right, here we go. This is the 18 foot challenge. It's getting quite small now. Nope, it wouldn't find that spot. So I wonder if it's a little too small at 18 feet. So it's searching for parking spaces. It's looking for it. No, I don't think it's gonna do 18 feet. I think we've finally gone just a little bit too small. 19 feet was the best result, but it worked pretty darn well. I gotta tell you what. The thing that's really holding back fuel cell technology is of course the lack of infrastructure. There just simply isn't enough hydrogen stations in the US. 40, 40 in the US is not nearly enough to justify <laughs> you know, buying a, a hydrogen vehicle if you don't live in certain areas of California, and that is such a shame. It's gonna take the manufacturers to come together and start building out the stations across the US, or a manufacturer like Tesla did with the supercharger network, because if they can do that, there is a big potential for success here. The next one you see behind me, the Limited, comes in at about $62,000 and some change, which is a lot of money, but keep in mind, there's a lot of new technology that lives underneath the hood of this vehicle. But here is the kicker. It makes a lot more sense to lease an Exo because you can lease a 60 some thousand dollar car for under $400 a month, and they give you $15,000 in hydrogen fuel credits to drive along in your new Nexo, which is pretty berserk. So basically you never pay for fuel along the life of that lease. Now let me know in the comment section below what do you think of this new Nexo. I'm really excited about hydrogen fuel cell technology, but unfortunately the infrastructure just isn't here yet. There's only about 40 stations nationwide here in the US and just about all of them are in California. So if you're living in Colorado like me, you better get used to trucking it back and forth to drive it because there's no other way to do it, unfortunately. As always, this is Tommy with the Fastlane Car. Head over to tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews.